Hey, it's Matt with Armadillo Marino. We're joined by Tasha Nungshi for the third in our series covering episodes eight to 10 of the Eco Challenge. And we're going to find out how it is that they dug deep to get as far as they did. There are spoilers. Make sure you've watched episodes eight to 10. Let's get started. Hey guys, I'm Nash and that's Tash. Uh, you've been witnessing us for you know, the last two episodes and today we're gonna actually uh, run you through uh, episodes eight to 10 of our Eco Challenge finale. I mean, some of you must be surprised that we even made it that far, including us, even <laughs> for us, it's kind of surreal. But uh, today we are in conversation with Armadillo Marino, a, a brand that we truly believe in and we can't wait to interact with Matt, who's gonna be the host and the ghost. <laughs> hey guys, really, really great to see you both. I love that you're wearing the blue armadillo. I'm in the green, so I've recently got myself one of the mid to base layers, so we're all looking pretty fresh. How are they for you guys? Hey, Matt. Yeah, we're super stoked. You know, uh, new colors, uh, fresh feel. It, uh, we feel so comfortable. Like I said, this is our daily wear. It's also used in yes. expedition. So we couldn't be more excited to be speaking with you in a, comf in a very comfortable armadillo layer. I know, and blue is my favorite color, by the way, so I love it. It's like <laughs> my thing now. <laughs> hitting camp three, you know, you're hitting the final legs of the race. Talk us through it, you know, you're seeing dad, what's, what's he feeling? What's the team morale like as well? Like, how are you guys staying motivated at this particular point of the race? Yeah, just before this, you know, the, the jungle navigation section that we had pretty nasty, you know, experience in, uh, we were quite thrilled that we made it to camp three. Uh, in fact, just as we approached the camp, we saw dad looking at us because he was, you know, obviously one stressed about, you know, the team's uh, progress. We were pretty much in the bottom few teams and then, uh, you know, always waiting to, to see the leaderboard and check it out and see that we were finally approaching the camp. For him, it must, be, it must have been a sense of relief. And to us, because we were so exhausted, haven't, you know, we hadn't slept for, yeah, almost... Um, 32 hours, I think, you know, barely slept previous, uh, you know, uh, race days. We, we didn't know what to, like, how to express ourselves as we reached Camp 3, although we knew that, you know, this is it. We are inching closer to the, the finale. You know, Tashi, I believe you fell and you sort of hit your chin at this point, didn't you? And you're obviously going through the wars even more. Um, yeah. You know, so when something like that happens, you know, you're already having a really tough time, you know, Right. What what what's going through your mind? Are you thinking at this point that it's particularly difficult? Like, are you more inclined to to want to take some more time to to rest before you tackle next next challenges? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, my concern at this point was I should avoid any sort of infections on that wound because obviously, I mean, we had heard so much about Fiji and the jungles in Fiji, and even small slightest thing could actually become a dampener for my next of the legs. So, um, and not having doctors. At that point, I knew if I did call for help, that would be it. Like it would be, you know, team out because anytime you call somebody for help, it's like, you know, the team is giving up and they have to come out. So things were quite difficult, but I know that I had to make it to checkpoint to be able to make myself feel more comfortable with what I'd already gone through. Uh, mentally too, because, you know, we knew we had to keep going and there was a lot more section left on that, on the waterfall front. And the rocks weren't easy on us. I think that was one of the most uh, crucial and difficult portion of the, you know, leg. It was extremely challenging. The rocks yeah. were so slippery. I was like, what if I fall again? And what if I hit myself again? And after that, I was kind of paranoid. Like, I didn't want to, uh, you know, rush myself into just getting to the checkpoint as well. Because I knew I could again slip and hit myself and that would be it. So, yeah, we had become more cautious after that. But it wasn't easy. Trust me, I was trying to deal with it mentally, not letting it affect my other team members. I was just like, yeah, I'm fine, guys. I'm fine. But internally, I was dealing with a lot of like, you know, saliva and blood and just trying to cope with that whole scenario. So, so. And I think people can't even like get gauged from the fact, you know, from the video alone, how quickly we were moving on these things. Because mm -hmm. we were, like I said, we were like some of the bottom teams. And for us, time was also crucial. Yeah. Uh, so we, this is like all happening fast forward. We're on to the falls now. I sent you the clip. This is yep. obviously, you guys are buzzing at this point. So all morale is through the roof now because you get to do what you wanted to do. Did you feel that your morale increased at this point and you got like an extra amount of energy between you guys and the team? Just to know that this was, we were going to be in our element felt so much nicer. And we couldn't wait. I mean, I was like, can yeah. we go now? Can we go now? But we had to, you know, we, because there couldn't be a lot of people at one time on the rocks, on the wall. So we had to wait because there were two or three teams ahead of us. 
and so we i was like itching and dying to you know go and uh, start climbing uh, and we were made to wait for about 10 to 15 yeah. minutes so but regardless of you know what time we spent uh, just looking at the waterfall and you know being mesmerized by the beauty we were like okay we this this will make us come alive like the whole experience up this waterfall uh will really yeah. set the tone for the day and uh we surely will... got our spirits high for sure i mean <laughs> we were so excited we're like damn eh, we're finally gonna get to cover the distance in a short period of time because we are good at this stuff so we we're like yeah i wish this had come earlier on on the expedition but well at least we made it there and we were very excited to <laughs> get on the <laughs> ascending ropes for sure you guys are about to face what from the viewer's perspective look like probably the most challenging part of the whole race, mm -hmm. whether or not you knew it, there are teams that got into real trouble at this point, you know, and they're one team in particular, um, one of the team members sort of nearly got hypothermia at a really, really bad time. You know, obviously you, you guys don't know yeah. this, but at this point of the race, you're about to tackle it. Bear has given you a bit of a pep talk. He's making you feel good. Even with this pep talk, yeah. Thoughts of hyperthermia and things like that, are they on your mind? Is this a really concerning point of the race for you guys? Yes. I mean, when he, I think the pep talk was going amazing when he was like, you know, you girls are still smiling and it's good to see you guys spirits high. And we were very excited because we're like, yes, we finally got that, that sort of, uh, you know, admiration from Bear. But then when he told us that, you know, a lot of dreams dropped out and that people have ended up getting hypothermia in the next leg, we were so worried. We were just anticipating. We were curious about what's going to come next because we didn't know we have to swim those lakes one after the other. And honestly, at that point, I was freaking out. I was like, I don't know what this is because usually my sister and I, you know, being mountaineers, we are not very scared of hypothermia as such because touch wood, we've never got it. But if Bear said that most teams have got hypothermia, then it's definitely to do something with water. And if there is water... Oh man, and it really depended on how the course was going to look after we went on from here uh, because we were all like, oh my gosh, like what is going to come and why did Bear say that? So we were, yeah, as much as excited we were, we were like quite uh, damned. We were like, I don't know what's going to come and how are we going to deal with it as a team? Yeah. How do you go from knowing that this is going to be really, really difficult, probably one of the most challenging things, considering you guys, you're both somewhat scared of water what do you need to do mentally to get yourself into that water and start pushing your team forward oh okay so i mean when we actually reached the point where we had to start swimming from trust me matt there was a point where all four of us are looking at each other and we are thinking to ourselves like i think we should just call the satellite and just call it quits because you know when we try to see both ways going into the, the, the trail that we had to actually follow after the swim. We were trying to see if we can avoid swimming and just like take a traverse from the outside of the, the lake. But then we were just like worried because we like, we didn't know how, how much time we'll end, actually end up spending if we did take that shortcut mm -hmm. or if we did avoid the river because, I mean, sorry, the, uh, what do you call it? The lake. The, the lake. I mean, you know, we were just worried like how are we going to deal with it if we did take a wrong turn. So we wanted to avoid the water, but knowing that there was no chance we had to avoid it, we were just like worried. And at that point, honestly, it was 99% that our team was going to call it quits. I mean, not even joking. So everybody looked at each other and they're like, guys, are you sure? Because, uh, you know, Brandon at that point, like other, other, other team member, he was shivering. We all had jackets, but that was not enough. So, you know, I mean, we were just kind of anticipating like what's going to be our next move because at that point, honestly, we all wanted to give up. Going from... Uh, I don't want to get in to being in, uh, you know, do your, do your fears, you know, are you, are you still thinking about the fact that you're scared of water or is the cold just taking over everything? And the only thing going through your mind is bloody hell, I need to get out of there now. Yeah. Uh, I think my fear at that point was not to let myself drown in that, that pool. And I guess my fear acted as a warm up to the cold waters because I remember this time when I was swimming, for me, it was not at that point, at least at this section where I was swimming, because this was the first pool that we had to cross. Mm -hmm. So we weren't that cold at that point. But my whole fear at that point was because we had backpacks on and we did not have any flotation device with us. We just felt like if we were to cross this horizontally to get to the other trail, 
what if something happens in between like what if i'm not able to swim with all that load and what if i like drown like there were so many things going on in my head and i knew i had to keep myself calm because my sister was keep telling me from behind you know she's like tashi keep yourself uh, like don't panic and you know don't let the fear come to you and so i think her talking amidst all this chaos did help me to push myself and it was i think after this first pool section where we started fearing the cold factor because it was almost like you're getting out of the pool and then you have to you know bush rack to a certain point and then again get inside a pool and then again come out and then again go in and that particular transition phase was where we were getting cold and we wanted to move fast so that we don't you know if we don't get the wind hitting us at that point any wind so we avoid you know getting hypothermic and that's when i said you know if you don't move fast we're doomed because you know when you move fast at least you are warmed up you know your body warms up and the the better you can keep moving your hands and toes and you know the blood circulation helps you keep yourself warm and that's what i kept reminding nash and the other team members that we have to move fast and i'm trust me man it was so difficult at one point because not only did we have to make up like make our way through the jungles fast but also make sure that none of us are like left behind or you know what if somebody is hurt all these like factors did play a big role and oh trust me that wasn't an easy moment we just don't know how we did that section do you feel like the you know this particular section of the race facing what are some of your biggest fears helped you gain that knowledge did you you kind of learn that there is that something that you've always had with you knowing that kind of fears in your mind push past it you know fear fear is a state of mind the moment you allow the negative thoughts to kind of invade your uh, mental frame it's going to take over so quickly it's very easy to fear things because uh, most of us haven't learned mechanisms to kind of cope with it for us a climbing journey our climbing journey and certainly some of the expeditions uh, you know to the far flung areas of our planet has helped us see that it has helped us see how uh, overcoming your fear becomes your biggest strength in over in, in order to achieve your goal and so for us it's taken yeah, years of experience and we can definitely say that fear is in our minds and uh, you know in order to fight it you just never allow uh, you know a, a big part of your concern uh, invade your mind and as long as you can keep those thoughts away uh, and uh, you know you believe in the spontaneity of it all uh, things work for you they work in your favor okay cool um so you've finished that leg this is the next Ooh. one very very quick one um but i'm interested to see it because You've now gone to, uh, this is Camp 22 or Checkpoint 22? Mm hmm Checkpoint, yeah. So, yeah, have a quick watch. Oh, yeah. Oh, what a relief. Wet stuff up as soon as you can. Oh, man. Oh, man. That was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. My mind kept telling me, don't give up, don't give up, which is so crucial uh, for my body to function. And I'm so happy everything was working in sync. The last leg was really pushing it hard, really pushing it hard because we would have made it otherwise. I can't believe I'm holding oh. a cup of chocolate. I was like so proud of Nash and I, like we pushed through. So I'm so glad we got done with that part. And if it hadn't been for us, each other motivating one another, we would have been out of the race. True that. So, checkpoint twenty-two, probably one of the happiest days of your life or moments of your <laughs> life. Getting through that, I imagine. Was that the best hot chocolate you've ever had? <laughs> yes, I must admit. You know, when you don't have something and you suddenly find it in the middle of nowhere, you're absolutely thrilled about it. It was like you know, giving candy to a child when they feel so excited about it. For me, it was the same. I mean, that hot chocolate was probably the, the best ultimate. I've ever had. The ultimate, yeah, the ultimate hot chocolate I've had. Maybe because of, you know, the fact that, like I said, you, we didn't have anything like that. We didn't have uh, a good snack with us or, you know, a good drink with us. So when I got that, I was like, wow. And on top of that, it was something warm and nice, contrary to what we'd gone through. So I was like, yeah, this, it couldn't have got better. I <laughs> gotten better. I was so excited to hold that chocolate, yeah. Navigating at night, you know, you guys are sort of, linking up with a bunch of teams have a watch and then we'll go through it because i'd be interested i mean to be honest you can probably watch this one and we can talk anyway but talk me through it do you feel like as you watch it do you feel like you know having those people with you helped push you through those last legs because this would have been really really difficult where you are now having gone through everything you know there were a few teams who dropped out uh, because of a nav, nav error and we uh, certainly didn't want to get to that position because uh, like I said, the last few legs of the of the course 
were very uh, tiring. Uh, they were long. And we knew that if we, you know, yeah, if we went the wrong way, uh, we would end up not only losing time, but we wouldn't have the stamina to retrace our steps back. Okay, cool. So I suppose like after this bit, after navigating at night, we're hitting checkpoint four. Um, I don't know. One of the big concerns with something like this, I would imagine, and, and having been someone watching it as well, we see it unfold quite quickly, mm -hmm. are storms. Now, actually, on this exact leg of the race, one of the top teams, Team New Zealand, they, uh, they nearly got put out by a storm. You wouldn't know this, um, or potentially you might have heard of it when, when you were at some of the camps, but you're about to tackle the last leg of this race. Do you think a storm could put an end to your race, basically, at this point? Storm is something that we can really battle with uh, you know it has its own way it uh, really is very powerful for us all these forces of nature i mean there's no denying that i mean it really teaches your place in this whole wild world and you know it makes you aware of your vulnerability in front of this gigantic ocean mass and for us we were wary of that um, and we didn't want to risk losing our uh, life or uh, end the end the leg okay. we didn't even know how to canoe like none of us as a team had canoed before. So more than the storm, our thing was, how do we move this thing? Like, how do we paddle? Like, what's the right way to even paddle in the ocean? Because none of us had ever done it. So we were quite worried about that, honestly, because, you know, when you do not know the right techniques for any sport, it becomes very challenging. Then you're trying to put, all four of you are trying to put your brain into functioning well in that leg. And because none of you, none of you are experienced you don't even know how to do it. So we were all helpless at that point. Like we all, I remember we all started paddling with other teams. The other teams were going in the direction they had to. Our team was struggling because we didn't even know what's the right way to paddle this canoe. And when the organizers gave us like a 10 minute introduction to how to canoe this thing, I mean, how, how much can you grasp in those 10 minutes? Like how much can you understand that? You know, so it was uh, honestly, Matt, I think this was like one of the most craziest leg of, of the race because we didn't, none of us knew how to canoe. And more than the storm, it was like, how do we get past this in the ocean where we had never had any training? None of us had ever canoed in the ocean before. And that was our biggest challenge. Like, how do we together as a team go past this stage? I mean, it makes a lot of sense, you know, considering it's coming up to the last leg, there's going to be fears and concerns. This would be the crappiest bit to get knocked out, especially kids, you know, you could potentially like, you know, die. That would be really shit. Mm. I definitely don't want that. Um, but here we are, you know, we've gone through, I say we, you guys, and we've watched, and it's been awesome for us watching. It's been a lot easier for us. Right. Um, we're at the end of the race. This Whoa. scene is probably, you know, the one that you've been most looking forward to seeing. And obviously through the race, I'm sure you were most looking forward to getting there. Seeing that finish line. Yeah, so if you play the video and just give me an idea, because I'm sure that, Everybody at home, if you know, we're in a position like that, we're going to be jumping for joy, trying not to be too giddy. Like when you'd seen that finish line, did you all like shout and cheer, or you know, were you just like, let's just keep going, we're nearly there, kind of thing? Wow. Honestly, when we saw the finish line, <laughs> first of all, it was all unreal to us. We just felt like this is not happening. It's a dream because honestly, are we really seeing like people on the island waiting for us to actually arrive? And did we really make it till the end already? Like it was. It was honestly unreal. I mean, I, it was almost like waking up from a dream and making it to the finish line because it was incredible. Like what our team actually put up to make it to the finish line. And I mean, I was very emotional when we saw mom and dad at a distance and they were almost like waiting to run and come to receive us. It was like, wow, the world just changed upside down. Like it turned upside down because it was this feeling which made me realize of our times on Everest as well. You know, when we had climbed the big mountain and, and the joy and happiness in our parents' eyes and how proud they were of us. It just made us feel like, you know, I mean, after people watch this, they're going to be so proud of their own daughters because it just reflected on how, you know, we were encouraged into adventure and, uh, you know, our dad has been such a guiding force. So seeing ourselves at the finish line, trust me, it was like... <laughs> We were damn emotional. It was like all these things. But at the same time, it was unreal. I mean, we don't even know how we made it to the finish line. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, I mean, what are the chances for a rookie to make it past the finish line? Number one, right? That was our biggest, biggest, uh, you know, concern. Like as rookies, 
Will yeah. we be able to prove ourselves? You know, will we be able to prove our parents uh, wrong that, you know, we will, as rookies, make it past the finish line? Our dad was, he often says that, and I don't know how much of it is true, but he always tells us that, you know, I feel like all the seventh summit and the Grand Slam challenge, you know, you kind of did it because of your young age and your crazy adrenaline rush. But uh, Eco Challenge was different for him because he knew and he had seen and witnessed other teams uh, you know, some of those top athletes of the world, Iron Man, you know, people who had done some crazy, crazy things in their life. And then to, uh, you know, be able to know uh, for sure that they're like his daughters are going through the exact same thing and, you know, keep, you know, like our progress too wasn't, uh, wasn't too bad. It was, you know, coming at uh, 36th position as a rookie to him was, uh, was a big pat on our back and his back and he said, you know, this is truly one event in his life that he genuinely believes in our ability to do something crazy and something profound, which is where he also, you know, often quotes that for him, he sees that, you know, as we uh, say that girls can do better than boys, he says, uh, yeah, I mean, you're as good as boys, but sometimes you're better than boys in the way that, you know, you, you kept your head strong and uh, you had more, uh, you know, patience with uh, the whole scene so he was very inspired and to see that coming from him meant a lot to us I was like okay for now for once dad will never ever give credit to our age for having done this because uh, he clearly knew there were disciplines we weren't experienced in yeah he's not wrong you know one of the rookie teams to make it to the end like absolutely phenomenal <laughs> um we you know and it's been really awesome learning about some of the deeper side of it from you guys so so really pleased with that and now we're at the end of the race you finished it can you look back and go, I really enjoyed that? Well, now that we are in our comfort, for sure. Like, we loved it. <laughs> no, I mean, if you had asked this question while we were on the race, probably the answer would have been no. But uh, now that we have done it uh, and we were quite surprised by our own performance, I think we loved it. I mean, you know, I don't think we know we loved it because we gained a lot out of this experience. You know, I tell people we came in as rookies, but we've gone... Uh, taking away such important lessons from this whole experience. And we were so grateful for the opportunity because if we had never put ourselves through this, we wouldn't have understood much more uh, of ourselves that was, you know, hidden for so long, whether it was fear of the water, you know, not being able to pass those uh, fears mentally, but then to have to do it physically. So, uh, you know, looking back at it, we miss Fijians, you know, we miss the island, we miss the people, we miss all that hospitality during the days. I think it was a very emotional ride. You know, we didn't show that during the race, but we were kind of feeling it. You know, we were feeling the energy uh, from what we were going through and uh, it's, it's forever going to be etched on our lives. Like this is one of the moments in our lives where, where I feel like it was the toughest thing we had done, no doubt, you know, against the clock, against these 675, 671 kilometers uh, terrain. And I felt so proud of myself. Like, I just couldn't believe that you have the potential and human beings are capable of so much more only when we put ourselves there, you know, like when we go through that process. And trust me, it was an eye opener. So I would say that, you know, given a chance, I'd love to go another world's toughest race. Like it definitely changed me and, and very transformational experience, no doubt. Cool. Um, last question for it is now you finished it. I feel like we can ask, do you put yourselves through a lot, uh, you know, during this race, the challenge of dealing with verticals that you've never experienced before, canoeing and things like that, you know, and then also a lack of sleep, physical drain, keeping morale up, like, you know, sleep deprivation. Like out of all of these things, all of these things that you were challenged with, what do you think for your team was the hardest part? You know, are you, was, it, was it harder to be deprived of sleep? Was the lack of food the real thing that, that you found it most challenging? Or was it just, the, the, you know, keeping your physical self you know, intact enough to continue? Like, what, what was it, uh, those that, that you felt was most challenging? Wow. I certainly feel that it was, uh, I would like to say it was both, but in true honesty, this, uh, the, the sleep deprivation with the not, not having enough food to, you know, kind of uh, cater to the loss, uh, lost calories was the hardest. I mean, you know, you, you know how important sleep is for a human being. I know friends who would never compromise on five hours of sleep every day. I mean, they, they would ideally prefer eight hours, but if the, the least they could shed off the, you know, the hours on bed, 
they would at least expect a minimum of five hours before that they can never function or be in their senses. So in our team's case, it was certainly sleep, sleep deprivation because like I said, we were rookies. We were at, you know, we had to really cover up uh, on the lost time and, you know, push our game, our, our strength and, um, you know, kind of see ourselves in the finish line. So for us, there was an additional uh, challenge of uh, starting out as a rookie on this race and uh, not having enough time to rest or uh, recoup while also, you know, competing. So definitely sleep deprivation and uh, yeah, lack of food was a big concern and one of the biggest dampers for our team, the three warriors, yeah. Cool, yeah, that's perfect. So, you know, I think we've covered lows there. That's basically the end of it. Um, thank you for, for that incredible insight to what the race is like. And, you know, I imagine you guys, you're doing the next one, aren't you? Woo. Hopefully, yeah, <laughs> fingers crossed. We would love to, like I said, we would love to explore Patagonia and if uh, an opportunity like this comes again, why not? I mean, I, again, we're not stoked about putting our bodies through all of that again, but uh, on, the, on the flip side, there's also, you know, great learning and of course you live life only once, even if it means you were to lose <laughs> anything during the race and having to experience the life that you always dreamed of, might as well go with the, the latter, right? So. Yeah, we're excited about Patagonia. We're excited about whatever, you know, new disciplines that it involves. And again, uh, as long as your life can involve a little bit of growth and progress uh, from the last uh, point or the time you ever experienced something like that, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing. If yeah. it comes in that form, it's great. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed. We might find ourselves in Patagonia soon. <laughs> So there it is. We covered every single episode of the Eco Challenge with the Malik Twins. Really hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. We covered some really cool stuff, found out how they dug deep. And if you like the content, make sure you like and share and subscribe because we will be dropping more like this with some of our champions. Stay tuned for some more awesome content.